Does smart technology make kitchens more functional? Back when I was a kid, a smart kitchen consisted of a stove with a clock on it, an electric can opener, an under the cabinet radio, and a pressure cooker. And if you had the electric can opener, that basically meant you were rich. But if you had told me back then that someday I'd be watching TV on a screen inserted in the door of my fridge, I would have told you you were bonkers. Yet here we are. So how did we get here? Something phenomenal happened that was the tipping point to what we see today in modern smart kitchen technology. The thing that the kitchen was missing all along Dude, I'm trying to film a video here. I'm just looking for grapes. Just getting grapes. Well, can you hurry it up? I'm, I'm kind of like in the middle of something. Oh, I, I get it, just, just give me like two seconds. Right. I got them, you're good. Carry oh, on. Can I? Thanks. Thank you. Get the yeah. grapes. No, no, enjoy your grapes, thanks. Thank you. Anyway, yeah, the thing that really led to this onslaught of tech in the kitchen was the screen. They made televisions small so that you could insert them inside cabinets. Then there was this under the cabinet flip down television screen and you could mount it right in your kitchen, flip it down, turn on the television, not miss a thing. Gone were the days where the family cook would have to miss Wheel of Fortune while making dinner. Now they could buy a vowel and stir the goulash. And we began putting screens into everything in our kitchens, making our kitchen something that we can interact with. To the point that almost everything in your kitchen can have some kind of connective element that you can control on your phone or on some other type of screen. Do you remember these? These are mugs. Mugs used to be something that you just poured your coffee in and you sipped your coffee and then your coffee would get cold and you would refill your coffee or throw it in the microwave, but not any longer. Now we have these type of mugs. They connect, they connect and you can turn up the temperature to whatever you want it to be. You can set it to keep it at the specific temperature that you want for your drink. Mind blowing. Or, or what about these? Do you remember these? These were toasters. Yeah, toasters, you, you stick a piece of bread in it, push down the button, a minute passes or whatever, bang, your toast pops up. I mean, amazing, but not anymore. Now we have these toasters that have screens that you can dial in the exact amount of toasticity that you want. You can make it the perfect crispiness, all of a matter of a touch screen. And of course, the list goes on and on and on. Basically, when I come home from a day's work and I walk into my house, my phone connects to this list of Bluetooth items that it just about destroys my phone. And if I open up that list, I have to scroll through all the different items that my phone wants to connect to just in my kitchen alone. From my range hood, to my fridge, to my stove, to my microwave, to my mug. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. I mean, it's kind of cool, but I mean, come on. But smart technology doesn't make up for dumb design. And I use the word dumb cautiously because I don't really like the word dumb, but in contrast to smart tech, I'm using it to offset that. Because you can have a kitchen that's poorly functional, yet has all the bells and whistles of a smart kitchen, and it's really not helping you any. You can have a smart oven way over here, and a smart cooktop way over here, but that's not really that smart. What's really important is that you have a kitchen that functions well, that has good counter space, that has proper clearances from countertop to cabinet or from countertop to countertop walkways. And you need to have the appropriate amount of storage and accessibility to cabinets and pantries and even corner cabinets. You need to have all these things in place so that your kitchen is the most functional room possible. And then add all the elements of connectivity that you want. But a smart kitchen doesn't make up for dumb design. The perfect kitchen, in my opinion, is one that is pristinely laid out to be the most optimal kitchen possible. Then you add in the layer of the beauty of it, the elements that make it really stand out and be beautiful to look at. And then you add the elements of smart technology to just give it that extra something amazing that every kitchen I think should have these days. I think it's usable, but it has to be in the right context and in the right order. And if we concentrate too much on smart technology and we concentrate too much on just the look of the kitchen, but we forget about the functionality, we're missing the main ingredient that what makes a kitchen what a kitchen should be. Now there are some advancements in technology that I think really do help make the kitchen more functional. The first one is the touch or touchless 
faucet. Now these have been around for a number of years, especially in public washrooms. You stick your hands underneath, water turns on, water turns off after a minute, you dry your hands, away you go. But in the kitchen, it is a real innovative piece of technology. Delta was the first one I remember seeing. I don't know if they were the first to actually come out with it, but I remember seeing the one from Delta where you could just touch your elbow to the faucet and it would turn on and touch your elbow again and it would turn off. And now of course they have ones that are motion sensored and they just turn on and turn off with movement of a hand. I think this is excellent in a kitchen because you're just working, you're doing your thing, you have your hands in raw chicken or beef or something that you're doing and you, you don't wanna be touching everything in the kitchen, just spreading that germs or spreading the bacteria everywhere. They have Bluetooth controlled faucets. I mean, what? Your faucet is controlled by your phone. I mean, why not? Everything else in your kitchen is controlled by your phone. So the option to be able to use a faucet that you don't need to touch is really, really functional. Number two is really good also, and this has been around for a number of years as well. It's not so much smart technology, but it does involve electricity. It is the addition of electrically controlled door and drawer openings. Bloom was an innovator in this technology, adding servo drives to the door and drawer hardware mechanisms to make everything be controlled electronically. Now with just the press of a button or the bump of a hip, your door and drawers can open with ease. This advancement in technology has really opened up the kitchen for people who have some kind of accessibility or mobility issue. You don't have to worry about whether or not you can access your kitchen, you can just slight tap with your elbow, bam, the thing opens up and you are good to go. But even if the power goes out, these things have a mechanism that overrides that you can still open and close them regardless of whether or not they're turned on. Now the third piece of technological advancement that I think really makes the kitchen just amazing is a fridge that has a screen in the door. This is really neat. Now we bought this fridge on sale. We weren't gonna buy it because it was too expensive. It was on sale, the same price as the fridge we were gonna buy. So we're like, why not buy the fridge with the screen in it? And it is the most amazing fridge you can ever think of. It does two main things for me. It tells me the time and it tells me the weather. I don't have to look out my window. I can just look at my fridge and it tells me. It's raining out. I highly recommend getting a fridge like this because it can store your photos, it can put, you can put your recipes on it. You can be at the grocery store and you're like, do I have eggs? I don't know, let's ask my fridge. And you blip, 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 and a camera comes on inside your fridge and you be like, oh, there's eggs. I wonder if there's eggs in that carton or is it an empty carton? And these little arms come out and they open the carton. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it does look in your fridge, which is kind of convenient. I've never used that feature, but it's still there. And you can draw pictures on it with your finger. I mean, the options are endless. You can watch YouTube videos right on your fridge, which in fact, we actually do quite a bit of. I also get to use it to try to make this video and I hope this works. So, my opinion on smart technology is, get it if you like it and you're gonna use it. I think it's awesome. If you're not gonna use it, don't worry about it. It doesn't make the kitchen any more functional necessarily. The design layout is really the meat and potatoes of any kitchen. If that's not nailed down, you're gonna always struggle no matter what smart appliances, what screens you put in your kitchen. I'm definitely an advocate for great design, but I'm not against all the other bells and whistles. Tell me what you think. Have we gone overboard with smart technology? Have we reached the limit of what we're gonna be able to do in the kitchen as far as the technological advancements go? Or is it just the tip of the iceberg? Is there this horizon of technology that we haven't really even considered yet that is coming our way? I think there is. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. The epitome of a smart kitchen is found in one of these two videos. Check them out. Thank you for watching this video. We will see you soon. Hey, uh, do you mind getting me a kombucha? Yeah, oh, thanks.